All right, here we go. I had to cut it into two parts, um, but here we go. Days in school. I, I just say keep on keeping on with uh, counting and looking at those tens and some more. Um, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 54, but now you're at 100. So it's cool to make it to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140. Um, and then counting on from there. It's cool to make it past 100. Uh, you could also incorporate this number of counting activity that Bridges talks about in this March month. You ask a student to think of a number between 1 and 90 on your class number line. And then they would tell you guys the number. So they're like, oh, I'm thinking of 32. Okay. Then you as a class are going to look at the different sections of your line and say, oh, is it in this section from 1 to 10? No. Is it in from 11 to 20? No. Okay. So then you're finding which section it is. And then once you find that section and find the number, then you would practice just counting forward 10 from that number and then counting back, back from that number 10. So I'd go 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, right? Um, and you try that a few times with different numbers. You could keep track with some equations on the board of what you did and where you landed. Or better yet, they could practice writing those numbers on a whiteboard. So we say, oh, the number was 32. Okay, I want you to practice writing numbers that come after 32. So they'd write 32, 33, 34, 35. And they just get like two minutes to do that. Okay, you raise your board. All right, now let's practice going backwards from 32. So now we go 32, 31, 30. And you could challenge a kid to not look at the line and see what they could do without looking. But it doesn't matter. They could look at it. All right, computational fluency. This is all about story problems. And the focus is zoo animals. Um, it really could be about anything you want, but Bridges is saying to use zoo animals. You could start this idea off by just reading some books about the zoo. So here are some um, suggestions from Bridges. And then you would give them their 10 frame mat and some Unifix cubes of 10 to act out these stories, whatever you come up with. And then on a whiteboard, they can mathematize what actually happened in the story by writing an equation. So... Um, this is how Bridges suggests you do it. You use these number cards right here that you have, and you put them in two piles. One pile is 7 to 10. Another pile is 0 to 5. And then you say, okay, I want a kid to pick a number from 7 to 10. So they pick one of these cards. They pull out, let's say, a 6, because this is what this story is about. Okay, and you say, oh, okay, 6. All right, someone tell me what kind of zoo animal we should do. Penguins? Oh, that's a good idea because it's still snowing out there. Penguins. All right. So let's say I went to the zoo and I saw six penguins sitting on the rocks next to their swimming pool. Yeah, I saw them. All right. Put it out on your board. So they put six penguins that are swimming, that are by their swimming pool. Okay, now I'm going to have a kid pick a card from zero to five for the second number of what will happen in my story. So let's say the kid picks a two. So then I'll say, then I'll extend my story. Well, then pretty soon, this is what happened. Two of the penguins jumped into the pool to swim. So how many penguins were still on the rocks? So see, you can see it in this mat. They pulled two off of what they put on. And now there's only four left on the rocks. But they didn't just put it up with the others because you want to be able to still see what actually happened in the problem. So I see that I had six and two got taken away from that six. And so my equation that I would write would be six and two went away and I'm left with four. So that's mathematizing the situation, okay? More ideas for stories as you go onward. You would just ask for another animal. You'd pick more cards, right? And you just do all these different stories um, that's about taking things away or animals going away. Um, another idea from Bridges is uh, nighttime problems with the zoo. So a good book read aloud that I've just used at home that I remembered was Goodnight Gorilla. And that could bring the idea of nighttime and what the animals are doing at night. And uh, so nighttime at the zoo and animals are supposed to be sleeping, but are they? So each student in this case would need to have a piece of black construction paper to act out animals that are sleeping. Okay, so let's say 
Um, and this time, instead of starting with 10 unifix cubes, they're only always going to start with just five. Okay. So we put our five, whatever, five animals in sleeping in the little bed. And the bed is going to be the 10 frame mat. You put your five cubes on there and then you put the black um, construction paper over it to say they are sleeping. Then I start my story. Many of you think we should tell a story about monkeys, so let's do it. It was nighttime at the zoo and all the animals were asleep, even the five littlest monkeys. Let's put them to sleep on our time frame mat, right? With the black over it. Okay, there they are. We're going to start with five every time we tell a problem today. All right, they're sleeping. Okay, but you guys, two of the little monkeys were very naughty. They woke up in the middle of the night, climbed up one of the trees in their bed and jumped right out. So let's show that by sliding two of the cubes out from under the black paper. But we have to leave the rest under the paper because remember, they're sleeping. Okay, so they're going to pull those two out, as you see right here. And they're not going to peek at what's left. Okay, you're just going to say, um, we'll take care of them in a minute. But can you figure out how many monkeys are still asleep without peeking? Okay, and then we talk about it. And then... Um, we figure it out, right? We could make use of a number tree right here to say there are five monkeys sleeping. And then there were two that left. There were two that left. Now this was a different, this is just an example of a tree in a different story. But in this case, it would be five minus two and we were left with three monkeys. And then the addition equation would be we had our three monkeys and two more came back, right? Because they have to get back to bed. So the zookeeper got them back, those naughty little monkeys, and now we have five again. So from our tree, we can gather this information. So yeah, it's all about stories in our computational fluency. Story it up, everyone. Now, if we go to the last part, number line, your pocket numbers, there's lots of different activities you could do there. And I listed them out being with activity number one, starting it off. So hop with Hap, the happy hopper, on your number line. And so you have all the numbers in order and you use your dice to roll and see how many hops Hap is gonna have to do. Then you make those hops and name the number he landed on. So if I'm like, um, he starts at 11, let's say these are in order, 11, and we uh, rolled a four. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to jump. I don't start at 11. I start off of 11. Or, uh, yeah, I could start on 11 and then go one, two, three, four, right? And see where I land. Um, keep on doing this over and over and over again until you almost get to the end of your pocket chart. So he's all the way over here. But Hap doesn't want to fall off. So he's going to turn around and then hop backward when you roll. And you do the same thing. Okay, you're just working on those hops and figuring out what number you landed on. So now this one is called activity one and a half because it's very similar to one. But now when you hop each time, instead of just keeping track of the hops um, and not saying the numbers out loud, you're going to keep track of the hops on your fingers while saying the numbers aloud. So if you're on the number 14 and you roll a four, you're going to start on 14 and then you're going to hop and say, put your finger up and say 15, 16, 17, 18. So it's the same thing as counting on, but seeing it with the hops. Okay. Activity two would be to take your numbers and mix them up, but do not mix up the 20 and the 30. You would keep those in the same spots in their correct place. And you would also keep the teens with the teens and the 20s with the 20s. And then you have Hap the Happy Hopper start up and he's like, 11. Wait a second. This is supposed to be 11. Hap is not happy right now. He needs your help. Okay, so we're going to take out the 15. We're going to set it off to the side and we're going to find 11 and put it over there. And now Hap is happy. Now we start. 11, 17. What? That's not supposed to be 17. Get 17 out of here. So we put 17 off to the side and we find 12 and we put that there. Okay, we start over. 11, 12, 13. 19. What? Okay, so we just keep doing that. All right, until Hap feels really happy to be able to hop all the way across. Okay. Activity number three, play hide and seek with Hap. 
So now you have all these down. You have hap hiding behind one of the numbers. And it's similar to guess my number, but now you're just trying to find hap. And you use the answer of, they'll say, is it 15? And you 14? And you say, oh, hap is greater. Hap's number is greater, bigger than 14. And we keep on moving the clips to show our guesses get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. Um, and then the last activity, or no, this isn't the last one. This is activity four. Uh, matching. These are the cards from last month. And you would put a little sticky over the number, and then you match it up to these numbers in the number line pocket chart. There's some matching happening. And you can play this sort of like a game called capture that number. So you put the kids into two teams and a team comes up, picks one of these cards from 11 to 30 that you have ready to go from February. And then they say, oh, we got 15. See, that's the number 15. So then they'd get to capture 15 and they'd put the blue card over 15. They captured it and they'd write 15 down in on their whiteboard. Then the other team comes up and they got 19 and then they get to capture 19 and put the blue card over that and write 19 in their spot. Then you just keep on going until all the numbers are captured. And then just have the teams touch and read all the numbers that they captured. Who wins? No one really. And I don't know why they call it a game. But I bet kindergartners will still have fun doing it. Okay. And activity five is just a practice page of hap hopping on the number line and counting on. If you're looking for some other practice sheets, these are practice sheets of uh, um, the checkup, the number corner checkup, if you're interested in using any of those, if those look nice to you. Okay? All right. Adios!